today on Divorce Court. Today's litigants are repeat offenders. After marrying and divorcing, they're now considering getting remarried, despite his extensive record of habitual lying and chronic cheating. Let's see if he can convince her and me that he deserves mercy and another chance. Divorce Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toler presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Shaquala Spence and Lawrence Spence. Mr. and Mrs. Spence, this is what I'm calling Before the Vows 2.0. Huh. You two been together for six years, married for two and a half, one year separated, one year divorced. Mr. Spence, you want her to marry you again. Mrs. Spence, not so sure. So you've come here before me to get my opinion as to whether or not you should give this another shot. Mrs. Spence, I'm gonna start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your relationship and how we got here? Like you said, we've been married for a while. We did get a divorce. We were separated for a year, then got a divorce, and we've been separated, you know, that's probably about two years then. All of a sudden, four months ago, he came to the house to come see the kids, because we have three kids together, and he showed up a whole nother person, like, I don't know that person. We yeah. learned each other all over again. Well, who was he beforehand that led to the divorce? Um, he was a really bad cheater. Very bad. Give me a few stories. Okay, so for one story, about two weeks after we had got married, I went through his phone, and I seen that he was talking to a female. So um, when I looked at the messages, I seen that the night before our wedding, he went to the Waffle House to go spend time with the female. The female worked at the Waffle House. So the whole entire time, he was texting me and told me he was there, and he was just eating and about to head home. But he was there with the girl that was working there. Were well, you messing around with a woman at the Waffle House right before you got married? <laughs> no, ma'am, I was not. I was not messing around with her. I actually got a free meal. I mean, she was my friend. She hooked you up. And she gave me a free meal. All righty, give me another story. I was probably about six months pregnant with our third child. And um, I just, well, we woke up that morning so I could go to work. And I seen that he had a new cell phone sitting on the side of the bed. So I took the cell phone with me to work. Cause he, was, he had the old phone and he had the new phone. So I took the new one and I went to work with it. So I didn't turn it on until I got to work. But once I did get to work and I turned it on, there was like three different females texting him at the same time. And he had them on some kind of little app. So he had his old phone at home and he was still messaging the girls so I could be able to see what he was saying and what they were replying from the new phone. So you got to see the cheat in real time. Yes, ma'am. So some girl said she, will, she was gonna come over and he gave her the address and everything. I looked at the text message and it said she'll be there in 15. I knew I could make it there in five. So I went in there. <laughs> I went in there, I told my boss that I gotta go. So I left, the, I left from the job and I was six months pregnant. I didn't know what I was gonna do, but you know, she wasn't gonna go in my house, so I'm coming. I had his car and I had went and I had drove and I parked like a little bit down the street and I waited for probably like the girl said 15 minutes. It took her an hour. She had to do a couple stops, whatever. But I waited the whole hour in order for her to pull up. And when I seen an unfamiliar car pull in front of my um, my front door, he came cheesing down the steps, not even two seconds later, and he hopped inside of her passenger seat. So I cranked up his car and I drove the car and I blocked her car in so that they wouldn't go nowhere. And then by the time I opened up the front door, he was right there like, hey, how you doing? How you doing? Trying to block the door. And I was like, hey, he was like, you left something? I said, no, you left something. And I gave him the phone. And as soon as I gave him the phone, I went up underneath his arm, I went to the girl, and I knocked on her window. I said, baby, roll down your window real quick. <laughs> like, and she was like, um, she said, hey. I said, hi, I'm his wife. How you doing? And she was like, wife? I said, yeah, wife. How you doing? And she was like, oh, OK. Mr. Spence, did that happen? Yes, ma'am, it did happen, but... What were you it... doing with the woman in the car? I actually was trying to sell a TV. <laughs> he didn't have the TV coming downstairs with him. I had a picture of the TV in my phone. So I go downstairs, show her the TV that I hey! took a picture of. Fool. Is that, <laughs> did, did, is that up there? Did somebody yeah. write that over there while I wasn't paying attention? <laughs> that's his best suspense. Yep. Come on now. I mean, it sounds crazy, but it's the truth. What Why was the woman who told me a month or two into your marriage that your wife is really cool? Tell me about her. 
apparently an old little fling that he had uh, came back around. Probably like two months after we had been married and everything. She, I guess they had met uh, inside of a store or something and he told her she, they, you know, he was married and had, he had more babies and she wanted to meet us. So he was like, okay, well that's cool. So he let me know when he got home that he ran into her. And I was like, all right, that's fine. She can definitely come over. So she came over, she chilled with me and him and she brought her baby over. He was playing with our baby together. It was just a good time. So when it comes time to the end of the night and I actually look at his phone when he falls asleep, that's the same girl that was right there, like in front of my face saying, hey, cheesy. I seen a text message that said, your wife is very cool and she's really funny. And he had messaged her back and was like, well, yeah, I told you, but now y'all can be friends and we can still mess around. Mr. Spence, do you care to explain that? Yes, ma'am, that's not no lie. That's not no lie. That's exactly that, that's what happened. Exactly what happened. Yeah. That was and why my, did that happen? Because that was my ex girlfriend from back in high school. And But you married her. Yes, ma'am. So what made that okay? She at that point I didn't like her attitude. I didn't I didn't pretty much I just had a baby. And I just I didn't under, I did, couldn't understand how she was. I what didn't you understand? Just about everything, <laughs> honestly. It's just I took her for granted, and I did not know that until years later. You know, just on a practical tip, you shouldn't run around on her because you're not smart enough to get anything by her. You know what I'm saying? She keeps cat. You know what I mean? Yes, ma'am. She puts this together, put that. She got the phone. She out there, you know. You, you... She firing on all cylinders, and you just kind of got two. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. I, I was on two of that. I was on. I was. Mrs. Spence says that you are so jealous that it has caused her to lose a number of close friends, and I want to talk about that. It's like you got to the count of three to get here now. And when he gets to two, he decides to shoot his gun off in the air. Tell me why I shouldn't light you up. Mrs. Spence, you say Mr. Spence is extraordinarily jealous. Why don't you tell me about that? We had um, got into an argument. I wanted to leave and go to my sister's house. I was there for probably about an hour, not even, and I seen text messages and, um, that was coming to me that was like, oh, you're out cheating, you're doing what you want to do while you're pregnant, that's probably not even my baby. And then he tried to say that he left from the house and left the kids there. So what I did was I Ask my family member, can you please take me home so I can go get my kids? Like, he sounded like he really did leave. So he took me home, and when I had got there, I went to the front door, I seen that it was locked. So I went ahead and went around and went to the back door, and I seen that it was still locked. So I was like, he gotta be in there. And then that's when I seen like the shades moving from him looking, and I was like, oh, he in there, let's go. We going back to your house. So we started walking away. So I get down the stairs. He didn't see what family member it was. He just saw a guy, and it was dark outside. Mm -hmm. So. He comes out the um, back door and he's screaming like, you better get in here right now. You better get in here right now. You ain't talking to me, so let me go ahead and keep walking. So I was <laughs> like, for real. So I was in, he was like, you got to the count of three to get here now. He started counting, he went to one. I kept on walking, cause you're not talking to me. So when he gets to two, he decides to shoot his gun off in the air. <laughs> so I got mad. And my family member's like, uh uh, nope, we're calling the police. Let's go right now. So then he, like, when he got to three, he shot it again because I kept on walking. So we went and got inside of the car. As soon as we get in the car, my family member's like, get your phone. We're calling the police right now. So I looked down to grab my phone. As soon as I look back up, he's right here at the window. Like, okay, come on, let's go now. You can get out and you can come talk to me. I was like, no, we're not going to do this. Well, I'm about to call the police on you. You need to back up. So me and my family member were both telling him, back up from the car, get off of my car. He went back up. So we reversed and was about to leave. Lo and behold, he holding on to the daggone sunroof, riding down the street with us. On the sunroof? Hanging on to the sunroof. Riding down the street. Riding down the street, right along with us out the neighborhood. Mr. Spence, tell me why I shouldn't light you up. <laughs> you got your kids in the house. Yeah. She left after an argument. You come out with a gun. 
you fire that gun not once, but twice. Not, not only do they have to hear that, they got to see it, they got to feel it, they got to live it. Then you jump on the car, they mama not there, and they fool of a father on top of a car riding down the street. Mm -hmm. At any time, did you have any thought of anything other than your own fears? Because that's all that was. It was a little boy scared that he was going to lose his girl. I want you to make some sense out of that nonsense for me. I mean, I'm not going to lie, Yana. That was you no sense You were just a fool, foolish, I tired, would, trifling, yes, and tacky thing. Yes, ma'am. Okay, own it. I, I, there you I'm... go. Mrs. Spence, you also say that Mr. Spence is an unreliable and insufficient provider, and I want to hear about that next. He said that divorce means that you will be divorcing me and the children. Did you actually say that? Yes, ma'am. Keep an eye on me, Nick. I might jump. Would you remarry your ex who had a history of cheating but claims they've changed? Tell us what you think at Divorce Court. You say Mr. Spence always has a whole lot of jobs and also that what money he does make, he spends on himself before he brings it home to his family. Why don't you address those things? Um, financially, the guy, he will keep a job. Like, he will go and get a job. As soon as he get the little cue that, oh, um, your, your hours get cut or they feel like, he feel like they don't like him, they're playing him, then he will go get a job tomorrow. He be like, oh, baby, they playing me. I'm about to go get another job right now. Do you not stay on a gig long enough to show them that you're a reliable dude that's worthy of advancement and more economic reward? Um, no, ma'am, that's not all true. I mean, I have my resume right here to prove it. I've worked multiple jobs. No, oh, nobody's saying that you're not and working job, a lot. We're just saying you don't stay on the job. If, if, I, if I get promised something, like, if I get promised a raise in 90 days and I'm sitting here doing everything that they tell me to do and then 90 days come, they don't give me my raise and my hours get cut, I go look for another job. I feel in that Do guy. you ask them what's happening and why? Yes, yes ma'am, I address them. They give me the runaround, and when I, I say, well, I don't, I'm not feeling this, I'm going to look for another job. I Why do you think straight. that happens to you all the time? It's my mouth. I, I feel that... Your mouth it, is going to follow you to every job you get. Mm -hmm. So they're not playing you. They're simply not satisfied with the you you brought to the job. So you can't fix that by changing jobs. You have to fix that by changing your attitude. Do we understand one another? Yes, ma'am. You still working? I do in-home health care, and I also... Well, when we were separated, he decided not to help me with nothing or the kids or whatever, so I had... I couldn't find a job when I first moved back He home. wasn't helping you with the kids? Nothing, no. Nothing? No. Why not? He said that when it comes time to getting a divorce, um, divorce means that you will be divorcing me and the children, that you can do it all by yourself. So I opened up my own publishing company and I had just put my books, like two books out there so I could be able to make some money while I still look for another job. Mr. Spence, did you actually say I don't, that? I'm not gonna lie, Yana, I don't think I said that in those words. He but said it plenty of times. In that way, I probably... Is, is upset, that your I belief? Probably, yes, ma'am. That's my belief because it happened so long ago that I try to keep the negative stuff in the past. But what she's saying is, if she's saying it, it's true. Do you believe that now that you're divorced, you have no obligation towards those children? I mean, at first, yes, ma'am, I thought that because I, right after we got a divorce, I got put on child support. Some she said I never was gonna get put on. Right. I'm only obligated now to come see my kids and visit my kids and get my kids. That's how I looked at it. He wasn't doing none of that. Keep an eye on me, Nick. I might jump. He's much better now, though. But... He's much better? He just came around, like, okay. probably about five months ago. Well, let's talk about the much better man that he is now. Because okay. so far, <laughs> he's not man. looking good. <laughs> what would your ex have to do to convince you to remarry them? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. We're here on a before your vows. You've already divorced the man. But you say that four months ago, you sort of reconnected. What do you know for sure has changed about who Mr. Spence is that would give you reason to believe that he would make a good husband now? 
Well, he um, helps with the kids now, and he became more like active with them and everything. And um, anything I need, he's right there. And I, he's coming down every three weeks to come and see us. And that's something that he never did before and never even tried to do. But he comes and see us every three weeks and he makes sure that we have everything that we need. Like, Mr. Spence, why don't you tell me how you've changed? Because you see, you see how dirty you did her. Yes, ma'am. What has changed your mind about how a man is supposed to treat his wife and his children. When we stopped talking, period, got divorced, I was talking to this girl. I thought I had met my other half to fill in the gap from where she was, and she did me exactly how I did her. And that is not cool. <laughs> and I knew how she felt. Yeah, so I you knew. were unable to feel for her until someone did to you what yeah. you did to her. Did you think she did not have feelings, or did you think that that's just what dudes did? They run over their women and run over their women, and, you know, as soon as they look like they leave, you act right a little bit, and, that, and then you, you stay with them? Did you think that's the way to, way to operate? Because some dudes do. At that point, yes, ma'am, it, it, I did, but then I, I sat down and I thought about it. My mom didn't raise me like that. And by the time I sit, really sat down and realized it, it was too late. She already gave up doing whatever she needed to do. And, went and you thinking about taking them back? Yeah. I ain't mad at you. You got, <laughs> you got three kids with them. I get all of that. And, and, and you've... Sometimes I always say women stay with the hard part, and as soon as he turns around, they go away. You don't uh, reap the rewards of, of all your, your efforts. I mean, you stayed a good, honest, true woman to him while he was acting a clown, a fool, an idiot, and, a, and an ignorant dude. Yes. And now, when he's got some sense about him, maybe you are owed the reward of that enhanced maturity. Mr. Spence, I hope you're worthy of this woman you're going to back for. I know you want to say something to her, but I'm, I don't want you to say something to her in front of me, because you haven't proven anything to me. You've been a long-time foul individual. And I always believe if somebody's long-time foul, they have to do long-term good before they can get back. Yes, and I haven't seen the long-term good. She loves you, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to see something. And all I'm going to ask you is you make sure you see something. I mean real, a whole lot of real something. He got to keep a job. You got to be able to keep a job and not mouth off and stay in the job and don't be slick and all that kind of stuff. Because if he doesn't, he'll never be a stable provider. And in order to keep a job, you got to be a grown man come in there and realize you're going to have to take some orders from somebody. Yes, ma'am. You know what I mean? You have to be an adult, a man. Any boy can get angry. Any boy can fire a gun. Any boy... Don't do that. We, we... Yes, ma'am. Our community is in need of upper-level brothers. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Level up, Mr. Spence. If you want to say something to him, maybe Nick will let you. But I'm leaving. This matter is adjourned. <laughs>